All right, Alexander, we have got to talk about the big story, and that is what is going on in uh, Haiti. We've got uh, the new headline is that uh, four dead, I'm reading this to you from Zero Hedge, four dead, two presumed assassins arrested in Haiti's president's killing. Uh, this happened yesterday that the uh, Haitian president, uh, Jovenel Moise, was fatally shot and uh, assassinated. The information is still coming in, and um, well, let's just work with what we know, Alexander. This looks like it was uh, this was a professional operation, from what we understand. We have videotape, video, video, videotape. We have video, Alexander, that is saying that um, the people that entered the uh, the compound where the president is, they announced themselves as DEA agents. And I quote, DEA operation, everybody stand down. DEA oper operation, everybody back up, stand down. Um, that's what they were heard yelling in an American accent. This is coming straight from the Miami Herald. And uh, that's what we have to work with right now. I mean, there's a lot of other speculations. Obviously, we can go all the way back to the Clinton times and what was happening in Haiti and the way they, they ransacked and pillaged the country. But... Uh, that's the information we have. You're going to add some more, Alexander. This is a a, t a terrible bit bit of news. That's it's, uh, an, it's, an yesterday. it's an extraordinary piece of news. Now, can I just say it comes after months of protests in Haiti. Um, the the president the, the the president who's just been assassinated was clinging on to power a year uh, for a whole year after his term had officially ended. And this is against a Supreme Court decision, a, a, a decision of the Haitian Supreme Court that he should have that he should stand down. And there have been big protests going on in, in Haiti, against, Haiti against him. So, you know, there's been a, a prolonged political crisis in Haiti. And of course, this actually you, you brought up the Clintons, because in my opinion, this actually goes all the way back to the Clintons, because what happened was, if you remember, back in the 90s, the US intervened in Haiti. They, they managed to oust the former president, Aristide, in a coup, which was, to a great extent, as it turned out, backed by the US, which was, of course, the Clinton-led US. And then there was a problem with the government that replaced Aristide, and then the US invaded, and all kinds of things happened. And eventually we ended up with a government in Haiti which was backed by the US and largely installed by the Clintons, which has, to a greater or lesser extent, governed the country ever since, and of which this president who has just been assassinated is just the latest iteration. I mean, he, there is a direct line of succession, if you like, from the political structure that was set up by the Clintons in Haiti to this particular man. And it's important to remember that this particular regime there is still there. They're still in control. The president may have been assassinated, but the officials that he's appointed or who were uh, uh, working with him, they are still in control and they are still in control of the security forces. So we have to consider a number of possibilities for this incident. One is that it is in some way connected to the political unrest in the country. But then we have the problem that the people who carried out this assassination were masquerading as Americans unable to do it convinced convincingly and some of them spoke English and did so with American English accents and some of them spoke Spanish now that doesn't really seem to relate them to Haitians but of course they might have been or alternatively and this is another possibility we can't overlook this might have been a hit organised by a faction within the government. And as I've sort of suggested, the government or power structure in ha Haiti is completely corrupt. Or it might have been a power, uh, a hit organised by some outside agency. And given the role Haiti plays in the Caribbean, one has to wonder whether drugs and drugs money have some role to play. And it's interesting that these people who managed to infiltrate this compound in that way 
did so masquerading as working for the the DEA. I mean, it, it does beg many questions, and it does beg the question how they were able to sort of march in, uh, claiming you know that they were carrying out some sort of a roundup, <laughs> and reach the president of Haiti himself and assassinate him. Bear in mind, this looks extremely well organised. It also looks very much as if they knew exactly where the president was. And, of course, I do wonder whether such a thing could have been done without some degree of collusion on the part of his security detail, his security forces, uh, uh, and the people around him. So, you know, lots of questions, very few answers. But I, I wonder whether there is some explanation for this in either a power struggle within the regime or perhaps um, you know a sort of criminal operation who knows yeah um, the Biden administration has uh, officially rejected the idea of DEA involvement uh, we do have the video footage which you can clearly hear uh, hear them saying that this is a DEA operation so I mean okay uh, it was a sophisticated operation there's no doubt about that um, uh, Alexander, we have to just just to be fair. There is the other uh, narrative that it, Haiti was uh, resisting the shots, and there might have been some connection there as well. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just telling you what a lot of the the, the different know. analysts and the pundits are saying. So there is that angle as well. There's the drug angle. There's the fact that. Um, Jovenel was actually he was traveling to Turkey and doing deals with with Turkey as well, um, and maybe some of his opposi opposition didn't like that. And then there's of course the the shot angle. So there's a lot of different narratives. We just don't know. Will we ever no. find out? Well, good question. Of course, all the you know the, the, we're we're told that the, the, there's been another gunfight now, and some of the people who were allegedly involved in this operation were killed but others apparently are still being hunted or tracked down. It seems incredibly daring to me that somebody would do this in this kind of way. And again, I'd be straightforward about this. To me, it looks like at some, at some level, this is, this is a guess I want to stress. I don't know, but it does look to me as if it has something of the hallmark of an inside job. In other words, is it really realistic that the president of a country would be so poorly defended and that that a group could infiltrate the way, their way into his compound and carry out something like this. I find that very difficult to believe that that could have been done without some degree of inside involvement. And that begs questions about the nature of the government of Haiti itself. And of course, if there was inside involvement, then that might also explain. I mean, you know, I'm obviously speculating but that's all we can do that you know the one of the reasons these people are being hunted down in the way that they are being hunted down is to remove them from the scene <laughs> because they might talk and they might say things that are embarrassing will we ever find out the truth i doubt it actually at least not in the short term eventually we may but if i'm right and there was an inside involvement in this. I doubt that we will, at least uh, in, in any in any short period of time. Right. Another narrative. Thank you for bringing that up. Another narrative that is going around from various analysts is that uh, Jovenel was ready to talk about um, some of the things that Hillary and Bill <laughs> did. Some of the yeah, some of the the stuff that they were up to. That he had the documents. I don't know. Once again. We, we can't confirm any of that. I just we, want to give all our viewers all the various different absolutely. narratives that are, that are going around. Um, absolutely. absolutely. I agree. I mean, can I just say, to me, this looks less like a political assassination and more like a, a, a some kind of a underworld hit. <laughs> I have to say that, frankly. I mean, you know, more like, you know, the St. Valentine's Day massacre type of event than a, than a sort of... JFK type of event. So, I mean, you know, and that, that I think is an important distinction. And um, while I, I, I'm not going to lend any particular, uh, um, you know, weight to any particular theory or point my finger in any particular person, I mean, you know, if he was perhaps about to betray confidences, <laughs> that might explain why what, why what happened happened. And while I don't believe that the DEA itself was directly involved. I do think it's interesting that the 
people who were supposedly guarding this president, in fact, you know, were not surprised or at least did, did not act with astonishment and resistance when of the, of the sort you would expect when a group of people saying they were DEA came along and basically managed to insert themselves right inside the compound so that they could assassinate the president. It suggests that they weren't surprised that the DEA would be taking an interest in him. And that is interesting in itself and very suggestive and, to my mind, may point, may point to the solution to this mystery. Yeah, I mean, it goes to what you said, that this had to be an inside job, because I agree with you. Why would, even if people came to the compound and said, everybody, like we have in the video, everybody stand down, this is the DEA, you would imagine that there would be security forces in place that would say, okay, um, what's going on here? Let's see your papers, what's up? And why would why would they just let them, you know, do a beeline right to the president and and assassinate? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. No. At all, unless there were people on the inside that uh, that were in on this. And Absolutely. As you answer this question, I also want to follow up and ask you, qui bono, who benefits from this? Well, who who does benefit from all of this? Well, first of all, I mean, can I also point out? I mean, a security detail protecting the head of state. One would have thought that the very first thing they would do is they would tell, telephone him and say, "Look, we got all these guys who say they're from the DEA." You know, they want to come in. <laughs> you see, he just lets them come in. You know, what, what, what exactly does he expect? And surely the other thing they would do in this kind of situation is they would contact the, the, the embassy, the U.S. embassy, and say, you know, all these people are turning up waving, you know, DEA badges and all the rest. <laughs> you, know, are, 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 you know, who are they? Why are they here? I mean, it's as if it's as if they were expected <laughs> I mean, that's all I can say. Now, that may have been organised. I mean, that must have been organised with some internal help. I mean, I just don't believe that these things happen. Who benefits? Well, that's a very good question. First of all, as I said, there were pro- there have been ongoing protests in Haiti for a very long time now, months, in fact, against this particular president and his government, because many people in Haiti think it's illegitimate. And they have felt that way about all the all the Haitian governments that have been there since the 1990s and it's an ongoing story and the protests were large and they were getting bigger and it may be that you know those people benefit again i don't i think it's unlikely that the protests and the death of this person are directly connected in the sense that i think it's unlikely that the people who were protesting had the organisational skills and the contacts inside the power structure to organise an assassination like that. But you ask me, qui bono? Well, it seems to me that in the sense that they were wanting to get rid of this person, they've got rid of this person. Maybe they've got rid of this person in a way that will actually strengthen the regime, but you could argue at this point that they've benefited. Now, the other people who have benefited are people clearly who either had some kind of dealings with this man and wanted him out of the way, or possibly people who were worried that he would leak information about them, which is, comes back to the point that you made earlier. But, you know, at this moment in time, we simply don't know. We simply don't know. And, I mean, there is the larger geopolitical question, which is that the United States is interested in Haiti. It always has been. It always, for some reason, seems to think of Haiti as an important place in the Caribbean that it needs to control. It's very small. It's desperately poor. I can't really see why it's considered important. But US governments have repeatedly shown great interest in the place. So, you know, you could argue that if the situation in Tahiti was unstable, the United States might have been involved in that way. But to be straightforward about this, I I find it difficult at the moment to really connect the US government with this affair. And I think that if the US government wanted to remove a leader, they wouldn't be sending a whole group of people to assassinate him, pretending that they were DEA agents. That doesn't seem to me to be how the the US government works. I'm not saying they aren't can't be incredibly ruthless, but I, 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 I don't believe that they were involved. So I think I would see this as a conventional, as, as, an, as a hit, as essentially a criminal 
event and the way to solving criminal cases is by going usually into the background of the victim and finding out who his connections were, who he was working with, what he knew, who he might have been in you know, blackmailing possibly or threatening in some way, whose criminal interests he was standing in the way of, something of that sort. That, that would be my initial guess. Uh, and that's, you know, unless, of course, as I said, there was some kind of power struggle going on within the government, which we just don't know about. Yeah, and we probably will, will, will not find out. I, no, I, I mean, I, we're not going to really get to the truth of, of, of this. So we're just connecting dots again. And uh, there's a lot of different narratives about this. But I, I agree with you. It doesn't look like this was a, a, a government a U.S. government type of hit. It does seem that this was definitely an issue. Without a doubt, an inside job. I mean, that's. No, I, that I mean, goes without question. I, I, I absolutely think so. I mean, I, I can't see any other explanation for this. I mean, it. it, it, it Where's the it, head of security? But, Wouldn't it go to the head of security to the, some sort of chief of staff? What do they call the embassy exactly? I mean, there would be so many protocols in place absolutely. before you actually get to the president, if the president even needed to be involved well, in, well, in dealing with these people, I mean. Well, indeed, exactly so. So, I mean, you know, it, the, none of that makes any kind of sense. I mean, what this episode does show, though, in a way, in, in a kind of way, is the enormous power the United States has in Haiti. <laughs> that, you know, one way of infiltrating people into the compound of the president in order to kill him is to have them have them masquerading as U.S. federal agents. <laughs> that does tell you a great deal about who is really in control of Haiti. But but there we are. <laughs> All right. We'll uh, leave it there, guys. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we get some more news. Yeah. So that maybe we can connect some more dots and uh, we'll continue to follow this story. Guys, look for us on uh, Locals, look for us on BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, and definitely check out Super You, guys. It is a great free speech video platform. All those links are down below. And, of course, Locals, guys, we post all kinds of stuff on Locals. So look for us there. Um, and Duran Shop, 10% off when you use the code REALNEWS. Alexander's wearing a long sleeve I think you're wearing today. I absolutely I am. I absolutely. It's cold. It's cold. London is like that. It can go hot and it can go very cold. We've had some very hot days and now we have very cold ones. Mm. All right. Well, I'm, I'm wearing the hat and uh, I love you the hat. You certainly are. You certainly are. And I'm love it. drinking love from the, the mug. You're drinking oh, from the mug. Yeah, indeed. All right. Cool. All right, guys. You'll find all the links down below to help out this channel. Take care. <laughs>